Hey folks, uh, welcome to the Shoemakers Academy. I'm Wade Matawi, the shoe dog, and today I'm going to walk you through a shoe factory. So here, here's our little virtual factory tour. Let's let's check it out. Okay, so uh, what we have here is essentially uh, a one line uh, shoe factory, right? And this is all the componentry that you would need to basically make a pair of shoes. Uh, and we'll we'll go we'll go through department by department. And uh, so you can see now this, a shoe factory like this, depending on the complexity of the shoe, could make between 800 and 1500 pairs a day. Right. Um, and, and let's let's get a look. So first thing you have is the management office. So what goes on in the management office? You know, hey, you've got the the, the owner or the factory manager. And these are the, the also you see the business manager. So the, these are the people that do the buying. Right. The scheduling. Uh, and the footwear developers may also be in this area, but this is all the sort of the backroom operation stuff because anything that you put into a shoe has to be bought. So that has to be scheduled and delivered, right? So these people basically control all that stuff, right? Uh, you know, the if this is where you're the customer, you're gonna this is where you're gonna go and have tea and talk about it. Okay. Next is the is the development room, right? And this is or the sample room. So uh, in the development room, this is where when you send your design, this is where it lands first, and this is where the skilled stitchers, the sample cutters, the pattern maker, right? This is where they work. And inside this, in this room, now I say sample room. Now, if it's a big factory, this sample room could be the size of a basketball court and could have 300 workers in it, right? But for a small factory, you might have 10 or 15 people, right? And these are the most experienced stitchers, the pattern cutters, and they have enough equipment to essentially hand make your test pattern shoot for you. And if there's a piece of equipment they need, then they'll basically walk out to the to the main factory, right? They, they might not actually have a, a big lasting machine like this uh, in the sample room, but they'll just walk over here and, and, and use it, right? Okay, so that's that's where your basically your product development starts, right? And you meet with the factory boss and you send it over to the sample development room. So most of the work in the development process is going on here in the sample development room. Okay, now, say we're gonna go tour, uh, you know, what happens when a shoe goes, gets into production, right? What happens next? Well, basically, the, the business office is going to order the materials and all those materials are going to show up into the warehouse. And, and what do you have in this warehouse? Literally everything that you need to make a shoe. So you will have the leather, the textile, the rubber, the outsole components, if they're made in another factory, have to get put into the warehouse, right? Uh, but you're also going to have the last and the cutting dies, right? All that extra equipment, it's going to have to be stored somewhere, right? So here's where that is. And and of course, when, when raw materials come in, or outsoles or whatever, that everything has to get inspected. So there's a big QC operation going on here inside of the material warehouse. Okay, so now um, the orders come in. The first thing that's gonna happen is materials are gonna go to the cutting department. And this is where leather, mesh, textile, anything that has to be cut is gonna get processed. So the workers here will have you know, different kinds of cutting machines whether it's leather, textile, or fabric, or, I mean, if it's sophisticated, there could be leather or there could be water jet. There's lots of fancy stuff. Um, these are kind of what manual presses look like. But again, you'll have the cutting. And then behind each cutter, you'll see over here that they have uh, a stacker. So, oops, let's get over that. Let's uh, let's back, back up here, back up, back up. Um, whoop, let's get back over here to the cutting department. So the cutter will be operating the cutting machine and there'll be a worker right next next to him or her that basically collects all the pieces and stacks them to keep the pieces organized because if you imagine if you're cutting uh you know a complicated shoe could have 20 parts and you're going to cut 10,000 worth right because you're going to get the cutting department going to make a few days worth of stuff that's a lot of parts and if they're all different sizes and they don't have the size marking on it it's getting really complicated really quickly. Okay, so that's the cutting department. Once the cutting department is done, all those upper components have to get processed, right? So whether if it has a logo or it needs a stitching guide or it needs edges skived so they can be rolled over. So all that processing or any, you know, has to be done in the in the in the prep department. So that prep department is going to again prepare the pieces, right? So anything that has a logo on it or has to be skived or whatever. They, they have to do all that processing before the cutting team can get at it. Now, this group also will put together kits, right? So they'll take all those pieces and gather, gather it all together so that 
you can hand that bag of components to the stitcher and they can do it. Now, when you get into the stitching department, uh, you know, uh, uh, generally to support one stitching line, you're going to have hundreds of stitches, right? So this is, this is not many, right? This is just, just a diagram, right? You'll have, you'll have 10 times as many stitchers to really make a big stitching line but for a small, simple shoe. Okay. Maybe 30, right? Um, you know, there could be an electronic, uh, uh, stitching equipment also without humans, or if it's a knit upper, then you don't need so many stitchers, right? But these folks do all the stitching operations and, and they divide the work up, right? So, um, one stitcher doesn't take all the components and put it together that one stitcher basically does one operation and passes it off to the next person and just like in, in all the other departments there's quality control right so all once the stitching operations are done you have to have a team of people check it and there's some other operations that you do during the stitching operation before you put the bottom on if it's an athletic shoe you're going to set the toe puff or you're going to mold the heel counter right those things get done now whilst that's getting done the outsole components are going to be over here and these are going to be it's called a stock fitting operation so if you have a multi-part outsole say it's a cup sole that has eva inside or if it's molded EVA and has an injection piece, all those parts have to get glued together before everything goes to the main assembly line. So that's what stock fitting is. So here the workers are unboxing the parts. They've already been inspected in the warehouse, right? They're unboxing the parts and they're gonna put glue and primer and there'll be a pressing operation and they'll get all those pieces checked out and basically get the sole units finished so that the sole can meet the upper, right? So let's let's get on to that. Cause that's the, all this stuff happens in the background because you need to feed the assembly line, right? And here, basically, you don't want to mess around and have the assembly line waiting. So you get all this stuff done and you either either it's in the warehouse waiting or it's a just-in-time assembly line where it goes right from one machine to the next, right? And you have to organize it so that nobody's waiting, right? Because that's not efficient. Okay, so let's get down here to, to the front of the assembly line. So the first thing that happens in the front of the assembly line um, I mean, we say assembly line, but really what we're talking about is gluing the upper and the bottom together, right? So the first thing that happens is the shoe last gets inserted into the upper, whether it's a strobel or whether it's a board last, that's the very first operation. So if it's a strobel shoe, they might steam the upper, right? And then shoehorn the upper uh, onto the last, or if it's board lasting, they're gonna basically heat up the upper, get a little glue on the strobel board, and then they're gonna use a, a board lasting machine like this, right? Um, and then once you do some board lasting, you might um, do some waist lasting or toe puff setting or heel setting, right? Basically get that upper onto the, onto the last nice and tight so you can glue the bottom on, right? Um, if there's a little wrinkle left after toe lasting, then there's be a buffing station. And the assembly line, this conveyor belt runs through all the middle of this. So you do your operation and you put it back on the assembly line. Next thing is the workers are going to start applying, uh, they're gonna start applying primer and cement. So primer basically gets those, gets the upper surface and the outsole surface ready to be glued together. So uh, a primer is generally glue mixed with a solvent uh, or it could be water-based, right? More often than not water-based now. So you're gonna, and what is it, what are these things? Well, these are, these are ovens, right? It's a conveyor oven, right? It's not that hot and it's just enough to evaporate the extra water because this is contact cement, right? The, the shoe is actually not wet, it's dry when they put the shoe together. So they go through several of these stages where they, they put primer um, and they put glue, right? And then basically you wanna make sure that you get a good coating, right? So get the surface all prepped up and get the glue on it. And you'll do a couple layer. You'll do a couple coats of glue, and then when you get down here, the worker is basically going to put those two pieces together, and they fit them together by hand, right? There's a there's a human being that's lining the two pieces up and pushing it together. Uh, once it's fit together, it'll go to a pressing machine. So that's the operation here, where a hydraulic press basically squeezes down on the upper on the last and outsole to make sure they all fit together, right? Make sure there's no air bubbles or air gaps or anything like that. Uh, next thing, it, it'll go into a chiller. And, and the chilling machine basically sets the glue. Next operation is delasting, right? So if you're actually had to, if you've ever tried to pull a last out of a shoe, it's, it's difficult. I mean, if you do it yourself, okay, fine. You can take two minutes to do it. They actually will have a machine do that because you want to make sure to do it quickly, but also not damage the shoe. 
uh, and that's actually prime for all of this stuff is you want to be careful that in the assembly operation whether you're pressing or delasting that you don't actually damage the shoe while you're trying to make it and i know it sounds crazy but it happens okay uh, next thing is once you've got the last out it's time to put the shoelace in and put some stuffing paper in and also there'll be a qc station right there so you'll have a, this is the end of the assembly line all the workers will be checking the shoe putting the box end label on making sure you've got a pair making sure they're the right size and get them into the box make sure everything's clean so here you have a qc manager and they'll be do checking the case packing and then the last thing they'll do is they'll they might run these into a warehouse uh or they'll just load them directly into a container right so there's the there's the container loading so hey that's that's basically what a shoe factory looks like now it takes you know us 10 minutes to discuss this operation but it'll take a little while to get through this by the time you go from the warehouse to the cutting to the stock fitting and the scheduling operations to make sure it all happens together um you know that's a real challenge and it, it doesn't happen uh, it doesn't happen all in one day right you might spend a day or two in cutting because you're doing you're processing a lot right but th that's basically how the operation works and you know a small one-line factory like this might have 700 or 800 people um you know, depending on the complexity of a shoe, uh, a micro factory may have just a hundred people, right? Uh, depending, depending on the complexity of the shoe. Really, it's the stitching that drives it, right? So uh, that's the really interesting challenge where you'll walk into a shoe factory that could be as big as a city, but the 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 building block is essentially a, a setup like this, right? So even though you might have fifty assembly lines on inside one of these mega factories it's all broken down and organized like this because you don't you don't have a where one warehouse that supports 50 assembly lines that's too that's too much that's crazy so you break it up either by brand or by product type or however so again this is basically that unit so that you have you build capacity to support what goes on in the assembly line in a in a in a big tall snowboard boot maybe it's just five or eight hundred a day uh, a van slip on you can maybe make 1500 a day because it's such a simple shoe anyways hey folks that's what a shoe factory looks like if you want to learn more um check out our check out uh, shoemakersacademy.com we have books courses if you're interested in starting a shoe business and you want to talk to experts then you're in the right place come on over uh but basically that's it folks i'm wade i'm happy to i'm glad you had a chance to see this and uh have a good day thanks